Okay, so virtual reality drops training. I just give you a big a bit of background first. The last year in August, there was a release of a dropped object prevention um, recommended practice. It's a really good guide on how to implement a drops management system in your organization. We had a webinar in December uh, when this was really introduced to the region. And if you look at the, um, at the presentation, you'll see there's a section on training and it talks about specifically some of the requirements, uh, the different types, awareness, inspector training, etc., and competency verification as well. So a lot of companies, you know, start asking, okay, so what, what, what about this, and then how, how do we comply? So I started doing some research, but more, more out of personal interest. Um, we didn't have e-learning or anything available, uh, but that seemed quickly to be something that 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 would be applicable in um, in this case. So. Talking to a few different companies, uh, these are some of the considerations that we that we came across when talking about training for drops. So we need to be good quality. I need to have a measure of, of competency assurance. I wanted to be in line with the drops recommended practice, not just this document, but, but everything that is being produced by drops. Some people wanted the industry specific and, and others wanted it to be for other industries as well. Wanted to be interactive, uh, some gamifications. Need to have some industry recognition so you can have a certificate and then you can prove, yeah, you know, I, I've got the ticket, been there. Some logistics accessibility need to be easily accessible. Um, uh, some companies ask for, you know, LMS compatibility. Some companies have really good um, learning management systems and they just simply want to load it in. Language is a big consideration. Uh, it definitely, in this part of the world, you can't uh, assume that all crews are fully fluent in English. And then uh, affordable, ideally free. And also want to focus on, on a more newer generation of uh, people coming into the industry. So started the pilot development. I hired a company in Malaysia, a consultant in, in e-learning development. And then you know, it took a few months. Uh, we, had, we actually had a prototype in, in June uh, of this year, but it was really not good. Uh, I mean, it just you know, it's one of those really compliance thing, you know, your anti-bribery and corruption kind of course where you just click, 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 and you know, it was really just not good. So we wanted to bring it alive, get the interaction. So we wanted to have a 3D animation a videos. And that looks pretty good, but it was really hard to, 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 to put together. It was very time consuming. So in October, you know, I was speaking to, to a HSE manager at Transocean and he says, you know, you're trying all this gamification, you're working on, on 3D models and, you know, why don't you just try to develop a, 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 a 3D game in virtual reality? And I was like, oh my God, if, if uh, 3D animation is expensive, then uh, VR is going to be far worse than that. Well, that turned out to be not the case. And there's a few reasons for that. Technology is really rapidly uh, evolving in, in this scene. This is um, uh, Oculus Go from Facebook. And uh, you can have a really good VR experience on this for just $200. Uh, you don't need to connect it to a computer. And just remember, just one year ago, you'd need to have a powerful computer, uh, which you need to hook up with a device like this, with cords and everything, to have something good. But now, you can just have that for, for, for $200. Industry is growing rapidly. Uh, so the last three years, every year, the industry for VR um, uh, doubled and it's expected to grow tremendously in the, in the coming years. So the way to do this is, is to develop it on a, on a common platform. Uh, Unity is, is, a is a game developer's uh, platform, um, you know, computer, game, Xbox, PlayStation, and things like that. Uh, but basically, all the tools are there to develop a really good um, uh, training. And this can be pushed to, uh, at the moment, 20 dif 21 different uh, platforms. Focus is to, to put it on VR, but it's fully backward compatible with, um, uh, with you know, just using it on your browser. So if you don't have a VR in the future, you will still be able to, to, to use it. So here's um, a few screenshots. This is just uh, something we quickly uh, put together, uh, basically a virtual room uh, where you can see some you know, presentations, uh, posters of drops. You can walk around and identify a few hazards and you know, we'll build on that as, as we go along. Uh, we have a, a 3D rig where we can walk around and, 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 and develop uh, scenarios. 
but we're also looking at uh, developing uh, 360 video photos uh, and, and, and videos. So, you know, while, while developing in, 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 in 3D you know, is very good, it, it doesn't quite give the same messy feeling that you might have when, when you're on, on a real rig or other, other uh, work site. Yeah, so here we have a rig, but we'll also, you know, be adding a, a refineries and, and construction sites, anything. It's not just, uh, not just drilling. Okay, so stakeholders so far. Uh, Shell has been really supportive, uh, hosting uh, various uh, workshops uh, and has, has committed to, to continue to support uh, with their learning organization as well as sponsoring some, some costs to have these 360 um, uh, videos taken. Now, Sapura and Velesto, two drilling contractors in, in, in Malaysia. So, you know, just in my backyard, really been supportive. Sapura has a very good internal uh, drops training and, and has a good HR department. So they bounce off a lot of ideas of, you know, how this kind of fit in, a, in, a, in an organization. Stop, drop and, and reach have been more supportive in terms of, you know, connecting me with other people that, that might want to be involved in this. Reach has been helping a lot with the human factors to kind of develop scenarios and, and, and really put the human pressures in there. ABS, um, um, more recently, uh, you know, they have 3D models. They have their own standard and they're going to try to help figure out how can we come to kind of a, a certification product. I met with IADC recently at the AGM in uh, New Orleans. And, you know, they're supportive, obviously. Uh, drilling contractors play a big uh, role in this. And, um, but particularly, we're looking at involving their uh, student chapter. IADC have a student chapter, and uh, we're looking at involving the students in the development. So it'll kind of give us a quick feedback on development from the target group, also additional brain powers, and, and get their ideas on, on how to develop this uh, training. So uh, the proposal is to uh, form a, a DROPS uh, workgroup and just to give an idea of the expectation of, of the workgroup members. Most important, provide value to the project, you know, provide maybe subject matter expertise. If you have 3D models um, of work sites or equipment, if you wish to give us access to your work sites to take the uh, 360 degree videos, uh, maybe you have existing uh, 3D content. I know some companies have developed like even tools to do inspections and things like that. Maybe you wish to contribute that. Sponsorship would be welcome. Maybe you want to translate. Let's say you're in Thailand. You want to uh, help with the translation to Thai. We're looking typically for operators, contractors, major service providers, industry bodies, universities, but basically anyone who, who can contribute to, to the, the, the project. You must be able to meet uh, regularly. I think it's important you're supported by, by your employer. Uh, so we would not want you know, individuals in the, in the core work group. Uh, so there would need to be a basic agreement with a company in place. Jobs members are preferred, but it's not essential. But, so we'll develop things through, through a consensus. But you know, if it really comes down to having to take a vote on matters, uh, then only Jobs members get a vote. You will require uh, VR hardware and software because actually we are going to develop some of the content while being in VR. We're going to walk through together in these virtual environments discussing what kind of scenarios we would want. Now, if you cannot commit to that but are enthusiastic, we, we can make, uh, give you access. You'd need access to, to VR hardware and have a basic agreement in place. And then we'll have the public once the first draft is available. Okay, so the launch of the work group is basically now. Please submit your, your interest uh, to me if, if you wish to be involved. We hope to have the first draft available um, in Q2 of, of, um, of next year. So just in summary, so we're looking at a level one awareness training and certification, virtual reality um, based, but backwards compatible, should be interactive gamification, human factors, Multi-language support, the level one will be free of charge and it will be collaboratively developed under drops. Target launch 2019, uh, so the final product. So please send your questions uh, to me and uh, if you're interested to, to participate, I'll stop the share now and then we can open up the um, Q&A.